All right, video number two. Let's set your file up. Let's crop some images here and get you set up to then work your way down the rest of these tutorial videos. So I'm gonna get rid of this guy. And you should have had a demo project file or your student project file or your teacher project file. And already existing there, just this really soft gradient. It's kind of darker gray on the edges here and lighter gray in the middle. We are going to then come back here and we're going to grab the picture of this boy or the picture of yourself or the picture of the teacher, whatever picture you're using for whichever part of the project that you're on. And you're gonna grab that photo and you are going to drag and drop it into the stage. Now hopefully it does throw it down in the middle here. I've got these crosshairs here to signify that. If it didn't already expand your photo, you want the picture to take up as much room as possible. So if you are using a photo that you took, you might still need to adjust this to fit in here the best that we can because we just really want to maximize that person's face. So the picture of yourself, teacher, whoever it is that you're working on, just make sure it's kind of, you know, shoulder blades up or um, excuse me, collarbone up and that their hair isn't being cut off or anything. Now, if you look over here at my layers palette here, my demo face or whatever your layer is called, potentially is gonna have this little piece of paper right here. And this is bad news, but not the end of the story for us. We just need to make that go away because we won't be able to rip our face apart with this here. This is saying it's a smart object and we don't need it to be. So if I come over here to my text and I right click on my text, I then have the ability to rasterize this layer that just turns it back into a photo and not a smart object. And you'll see that pesky little piece of paper goes away. Now, the next thing we do is we need to isolate our character from the background. Now my picture here has a white background, so it's not super terrible. The pictures you took are gonna have other things back here that you might have to fight with. So you just need to decide which selection tools are gonna to work best for your photo. I'm gonna say probably 99% of the time it's gonna be quick select because it is a photo. So I'm gonna enlarge my selection brush here. I'm gonna start grabbing my person, making sure I'm getting all of my body parts. Now with this particular image, I do have a white shirt on a white background. So I do have to come in here and make sure it gets that in case it wanted to forget it, which it did. And he does have shirt over here, it's just kind of hard to see, but if you kind of scrub along here, it does attempt to grab it. Now, to make sure you've got everything, down here below your foreground and background where my mouse is swimming around at, at the bottom of your tools bar, we have our quick mask. And if you remember going in there, that's what I call the apocalypse, right? It dyes everything kind of a red tint so we can see what we've grabbed and what we haven't. Now when you are in the quick mask, when everything's red, we need to go back to using our paint brushes to fine tune this photo. So I'm gonna get my paint brush here, and I did a pretty decent job grabbing this, but there's a little piece right here of his cheek that I missed, and I'm gonna kind of smooth out this shirt over here. I didn't do a very good job there. Oh, and another piece of my cheek. So using my paintbrush, I'm gonna come up here and we're only gonna be basically using these default brushes today. So if you have a bunch of craziness happening and you don't see these fuzzy brushes, and we're gonna use some of these kind of crazy pixelated brushes that are default. If you don't see those, go to your gear and reset your brushes and hit okay. When you do that, it just wipes away all the other junk that we've downloaded over the past few weeks. So then you have a nice clear view of what you need to use for this project. So for me, I'm gonna get me a little fuzzy brush here. And by little, I mean little. And I'm just gonna kinda come in here. I'm painting with white, because white brings things back to life. And I'm just gonna fix any little areas that didn't get grabbed. Because white brings my image back. And I want this to look really nice. So when we did this together for this kid right here in the white shirt, we might have kind of 
slacked on details of stuff. But for this, when you're working on you or the teachers, let's do a nice job. Let's really go in here and you know just kind of scan around, make sure you didn't miss anything super terribly. Up here I got some stuff I want to go away, so I'm going to use black on it. And then that's just going to give us a nicer result at the end, especially when we share these with other people. We want to really show off our Photoshop skills. Got a little bit of a halo with pixels floating around right there. So when I want stuff to go away, I just use black and it erases it. Yeah. So let's go around, check, make sure life is good, fix anything that needs fixed. I'm being kind of picky here on mine. Pickier than I was when I first made this thing. But that's also the benefit of this light background that we have, is it kind of helps hide any of these little pixels that we've got floating around the edges. So ideally we wouldn't want any of these, but we still might have some stragglers when we're done today. All right, that's not too bad. Now, when I'm in here in the quick select where I'm in the apocalypse, I, excuse me, quick mask, I do need to get out of it before I can do anything. So I'm going to come back here to the bottom of my tools bar and I'm going to turn quick mask off. When I do that, my ants have been adjusted to my hair, which is super handy. And I am ready to move on. Now, we've got ants. Ants like to eat donuts. So I'm going to come over here to the bottom of my layers palette. Hit that square donut and it is going to mask away all that crazy background that I didn't want. Which is what we need. Now, before we go any farther, this is our photo that we're going to be using over and over again. Because of that, we want to kind of have some backups in case anything goes wrong. So this layer right here, we've got our picture. Right now it's called demo face or some crazy thing of numbers and letters because you got this picture from your email. Let's change whatever that says to original. This is going to be our original file that we don't want to mess up. And I'm just going to drag that underneath my gradient background. I'm just going to keep it down here where it's safe and if I totally screw anything up, I've got a copy that I can come back to. But we also do need a face that we can mess with. So we need to make a copy of your original picture. To make a copy of a layer, very easy. Command J. Boom, it made me an extra layer here. I'm gonna call this one face. This is gonna be my face. Now that face layer, I can take it and drag it on top of my gradient. So I've got my layer here that I'm gonna be messing with. I've got my gradient background and then underneath there is gonna be all these extra copies of things that we don't um, need to see, but we just need to save them. Now this mask, we don't need it anymore. So I'm going to right click on the mask right here on the black and white silhouette. And I'm going to apply this mask. And when I hit apply, if you watch right here on your little thumbnail, that white now goes away. Now yeah, we could have deleted all that stuff earlier, but that defeats the purpose of keeping this original especially on the pictures that you guys took because you might have realized that you didn't select like an ear or something that you need to keep. So I now have a face layer. While we're here, let's duplicate this layer. So Command J. And let's make a neck layer. So we eventually need to mess with our neck, so we're just going to break that off. So we've got two separate things. Then I'm just going to take neck and I'm going to drag it down. So make sure your layer order resembles mine. You should have a face, you should have a neck, a gradient background, and then your original. Please name those because as we move forward, I'm going to be referring back to these over and over and over again. And if you didn't name them, you might get confused on what step you were missing. So save this. You shouldn't get any errors and move on to the next video.